Welcome along guys, well I'm back on the 690 Enduro. I went to the launch of this bike in Portugal. I had some camera problems on the launch. I, I lost most of my audio from the whole launch. So I promised to borrow this bike again when I was back in the UK to see how it works in the UK on lanes like this, the sort of green lines we have in the UK, as a bike, as a bike if you want the best of both. A good road bike and a bike which can do some off-road. So here we go. This is the KTM 690 Enduro R UK test. So the 690 is a fantastic bike. I love the 690. It's a bike I'm actually going to be getting my hands on next year as a, as a long-termer from KTM. So I can sort of decide myself really if I want to go the Enduro route or do I want to go the Supermoto route. I'm a Supermoto guy at heart. I love Supermoto. So I think this bike would have to be a very good road bike to be able to swing me away from Supermotos onto the enduro and i think it would also have to be a pretty competent enduro bike to make me make that sacrifice of the road manners to have that off-road ability i'm not the best off-road rider i've also just broke my ribs doing a bit of motocross so i'm more nervous than i would normally be this bike has the full enduro suspension so there's no compromises on this bike from a suspension point of view. It's got the full-on Enduro suspension, 250 millimeters of travel, thank you. It's also got some fantastic electronics. You've got, you know, you've got a really up-to-date ABS system, cornering ABS. You've got a quick shift, you've got a blipper, you know. And I think that, was, that, that ABS has two modes. You actually have an off-road mode for the ABS, which I think I'm in now. <laughs> Let me just check. Yeah, in, in the off-road mode, it turns off the ABS on the rear brake, so you can lock the rear, you can do that sort of thing, but it should still give me some front ABS. Just, just pull the front and see what happens. Yeah, that's, that's the ABS in off-road mode. That is a very sophisticated, that was a full whack of front brake, and it stopped quickly, and I could just feel the lever pulsating a little bit. For a beginner like me, that gives you a load of confidence. The power of this engine is also incredible. 74 brake horsepower. I mean, this is the most powerful Enduro. All of the proper KTM Enduro ranges have nothing like the power this has got. Even the 500 EXC, nowhere near 74 brake. And 73 new meters of torque this has got as well. Back on the roads. This is the beauty. This is the beauty, you see. In the UK, we've got stretches of off-road lanes we can go on but you've got sort of at least 50% road riding to do so if you're on a full-on enduro hopefully we won't need that later if you're on a full-on enduro you struggle when you're on the road sections compared to a full-on enduro bike this is this is heavy and I think that is the biggest disadvantage with this being a an off-road bike. If you want to use this more for off-road and less on-road, this weighs 145 kilos. The dedicated Enduro range of KTMs are like 105 kilos. Even lighter with some of the two-strokes. See, it's great on this when you're on a bit of road in between your lanes. I'd say really, apart from the 21 inch front wheel, which you can notice, it's got a bigger, yeah, there's a bit more weight on the front and it makes it a bit more skittish because it's got the 21. Apart from that, you know, it's, it's very, very similar to the, to the SMCR. Also, the brakes aren't as good as the SMCR because you don't want too much braking when you're, when you're off-road. So the brakes are nowhere near as good as the SMCR brakes. They're just a, a two-pot front caliper. The SMCR has got a four-pot Brembo, this is just two-pot. But when you're off-road, you wouldn't want those powerful brakes because you'd just be locking the front constantly. Again, it's a compromise. This bike also does have the quick shifter. But with Enduro boots on, I can't really get on with the quick shifter on this. 
if you're not wearing enduro boots and you're using it for the road with like a road base boot it's fine but with the big clumpy enduro boots you keep knocking it into false neutrals and real neutral because this does have this does have a few false neutrals the blipper though is fantastic I love to use the blipper let me show you the blipper quick shifter blipper the blipper's brilliant never had any problem with the blipper I love it and off road the blipper's nice you don't have to pull the clutch you can leave your, you know, your, your hands firmly on the bars and just knock it down so the blipper does make a lot of sense as a and so does the quick shifter really in the off-road situation so you can just hold the grip support yourself just change gear not everyone loves to pull wheelies everywhere I certainly don't so what I found is even with the traction control in level 2 sorry the map in level 2 which is the off-road mode like I was then it will let you do a wheelies and then all of a sudden after a while of doing a wheelie it will decide you've had enough and it will shut the power so to do wheelies for days <laughs> you have to turn the traction control off completely which is that button there that new 690 Duke motor is a, it's a fantastic power plant the performance is above the old model so the original 701 had the early 690 Duke motor in they've now added this balancer shaft and it really has transformed it it's half the vibrations but there's still enough vibrations to let you know you're on a you're on a big thumper so you've still got that bit of character but it's just taken away the the lumpiness of it the, the bad things about having a big thumper leaving you with the good things and just sitting at the, these a roads at 60 mile an hour the bike is absolutely cruising you can cruise at 70 even 80 on this no problem at all there is not a better bike to just go exploring on you just want to go out for the day see where these little roads take you if it turns a bit gravelly halfway down who cares this I think is where this bike really works as just an all round go anywhere do anything bike what's down there? a little bit gravelly no problem what's up there? well that's someone's house but you get my point say your, say your SMCR is your ultimate road weapon for tight twisty roads your ultimate fun machine the SMCR is up here I'd say this as a road machine compared directly with the SMCR I'm not talking about off-road stuff but it's road capabilities I'd say it's sort of 85% maybe a bit maybe hedging towards the 90% as much fun as a road bike as the SMCR is it's very very close and as I say I think a lot of that is due to the tyres you could play around with different makes of tyres one's a little bit more road focused a little bit less off-road focused I'd say these standard tyres are 50-50 so depending on your preference of on or off-road tune the tyres accordingly because even with a more road focused tyre that may even edge a little bit closer to the fun you can have on the, on the SMCR so you're out enjoying your road riding you think aha here we go we're getting a bit gravelly now why don't we head down here? <laughs> Not in neutral. <laughs> Gotta stand up. It feel it does feel heavy compared to the little the little 250 I was on last time I was down here. There is more weight there undeniably. But it can do it, you know? It can do it. This is actually quite steep, doesn't look it on camera. Let's take a bit of the burn. Hey, hey. give it some beans knock it down on the blipper quite nice power up hey. oh we're out I mean what a, what a go anywhere do anything bike I mean fantastic eh absolutely incredible absolutely incredible Suspension's really good. 
perhaps just a little bit less forgiving than the full-on enduro stuff I guess it's sprung a bit stiffer because of the extra weight of the bike but this is quite bumpy and it's lapping it up whoa so much power onto the tarmac which it loves whoa oh it, is there a quicker way across country than this <laughs> There's just not. As I say, it's 95%. Apart from the slightly weaker brakes and the bigger, you know, the, the thinner tyres. Ah, ah. It's really not that far off the <laughs> the supermoto. Bang it down. Duck it in this way. Power it up. Oh, there's a little track up there. Let's spin it around. They've got that track. Whee! Oh, yeah. Step it out. These tyres actually give a great amount of grip, you know. Stand up a bit there, really. It feels so rubbish. Way. Oh, we're out. I think it's the ultimate getaway vehicle. <laughs> if you want to do a bank job, okay, you may be limited to how much gold bullion you can get away with. But what a bike just for going anywhere and getting away. On a heist, this is the bike you want. Okay, what I'll do in a minute, I'll just pull over and I'll just walk you around the bike. That's another lane up there. Why not? Why not? Oh, squirrels. I mean, what better way is there to see the, see the countryside? Let's stand up. Centre gravity a bit lower now. Yeah, that suspension's lovely. Really, really nice. Oh, soaks up these bumps. Look at it. Oh, so much power. Let's pull over here. What a better spot to do a little walk around. In the middle of nowhere. There she is. Look at the surroundings. <laughs> Absolutely gorgeous. It's a good looking bike. I like the way they styled it like the Enduro range. So, you know, you've got the sack of the same layout of the fairings, you know, the back panel with this, the size of that panel looks just like the Enduro bikes. But of course it's a little bit wider because you've got the big fuel tank at the back of these. On the uh, Enduro range, the fuel tank's at the front, obviously. Same mudguard, same front lights. I think that the, the braking setup is exactly the same as the Enduro bikes, same handguards. Ignore my squeaky boots, by the way. Um, yeah, all the fuelings at the back. The exhaust on it doesn't sound bad, actually. But it's, it's stainless steel, it's got the cat in it. It's really, really heavy and it gets really, really hot. There's another thing you need to watch with the standard exhaust. I think they expect you, really, to change that. You know, not many people would keep the standard exhaust on this sort of bike, probably. But being the Enduro, perhaps it would stay on, so not to upset the, the locals. But it's a good bike. I mean, the only thing, as this is an Enduro, I can excuse the fact that it's got a very limited dashboard. You know, it's just basically your speed, your trip. Um, it gives you also some information like your miles per gallon average and how many hours the bike's had, your average speed. But I mean, there's not a lot of information there. It's basic of the basic. Do I think it's a bit of a shame that that's gone because the, the, the old 690, was great because it had that sort of info. LED backlights, which actually look very, very nice. Full LED, LED brake lights, full LED, full LED indicators, which is also lovely, but just a halogen headlight bulb. The seat on it, as I mentioned, you know, it's not the most comfortable bike in the world, but it is compared to a proper Enduro. Real Enduros, the seat is only that wide, so they're much more uncomfortable. That is still wide enough that you can, it's not too wide, you can still move about on the bike quite well and sort of grip onto the bike, but uh, it's not quite as thin as a real Enduro. So when you're leaning it over, you've not quite got that same contact with the bike, which you would have with a full Enduro, but it's enough. 
and it's a nice grippy material long enough that you can move back and forward on it no problem I believe that it's also tubeless yeah they're tubeless so you haven't got to worry about tubes tubeless rims uh, it's not you know of the, the super motor obviously you get a 160 rear tire this is a this is a 140 so on the road you know it's a bit of a compromise you've not got quite as much tire in contact with the road you've got 21 inch front um, again you know that that makes the bike feel a little bit more unstable on the road than perhaps the than perhaps the SMCR but once you get that through your head mentally it doesn't seem to make all that much difference when you actually ride the thing do you want to know what the best thing is about this bike compared to a full-on enduro yeah it's got great road manners yeah it's still pretty competent off-road not as competent as a full-on enduro but the best thing about this bike is is the maintenance with a full-on enduro spec machine your maintenance is measured in hours so it's an oil change every 15 hours, valve checks on the four strokes every 30 hours. With one of these, you've got a 6,000 mile service interval on that engine. That is the beauty of one of these. I've had a full-on enduro bike converted to a supermoto, so I know what it's like to actually have to do those oil changes, maintain that maintenance on the bike at that sort of frequency. It's hard work and it's a lot of work. If you're not mechanically minded and you've got to take it to the dealer to do that, it will cost you a fortune. The other thing about this bike, it's a lot of money. <laughs> this bike is £9,500, which is a ridiculous sum of money. I'm sorry, it's great, it's fantastic, but it's a lot of money. I guess if it's just, you can have one bike, you haven't got to buy an Enduro, you haven't got to buy a road bike, I guess you could justify it along those lines. It is a two-in-one bike, but it is, it's a lot of money. Nine and a half grand for a single cylinder bike. When I went to Portugal, I said I'd try this in the UK, see how it works on the UK lanes, the UK green lanes, the UK roads. In Portugal, there was some fantastic scenery, you know, massive, miles and miles of big open countryside to traverse which was incredible on this but I wondered you know what would it be like in the UK with our small roads our dwindling green lanes we can go on would it still work over here and I'm really pleased to say it absolutely does when I get my long term next year from KTM now I've got to decide do I want the SMCR or do I want the Enduro that's going to be such a hard decision because having that opened up to you to be able to take on those lanes is really appealing because I do like my Enduro without having to have a dedicated bike to do it on. That's going to take some thought. See you later guys. This is power level one, which is full power. This thing is absolutely bonkers. It's also pretty quick. Yeah, right. Never mind get beat up. Give me this any day of the week. Um. <laughs> oh, oh.